This video is brought to you by my awesome sponsors. Make sure to check out the affiliate links in the description below. Thanks again for all the support. Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is... What? I literally just got started. Iro, hello. He's trying to escape. Hi, little bud. Boop, boop, boop. Why do you have him? He was minding his own business. <laughs> and then you just snagged him. I think you, we can see him in the camera. Little man. Why is it so great in here? Reminds me of sun. What is this? Okay, go. I am having a bad time. I was... Goodbye, viewers. <laughs> Subscribe. <laughs> Subscribe. Thank you. Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Matt and welcome to Need for Speed Unbound. Again, I didn't want to be that one person that always played Need for Speed Unbound, but apparently you guys watching it and a million of you decided to subscribe in the last like three weeks because of it. So thank you all for subscribing. Let's get into it. Uh, Need for Speed Unbound. But I have this thing. You know what that means. It works. Need for Speed Unbound with wheels. I was not expecting it to work. And oh man, does it work. Apart from when that happens, let's not talk about that. So the reason why I was not expecting this to work all that well is when I saw the release list of supported wheel bases, it was like a couple of thrust masters, you know, your standard Logitech wheels. And then at the very end, it said something about uh, Fanatec CSL Elite Racing Wheel. Uh, for those who have Fanatec devices, know that that is most likely what they're discussing, the uh, CSL Elite Wheelbase that was released who knows how long ago now, and is no longer being offered on their website. So I'm sitting here going, why are they supporting a wheel that is no longer you know, being sold. Well, apparently the drivers or whoever decided to write that list is not familiar with Fanatec uh, products because this is a Fanatec GT Pro DD. And as you can tell, it's working quite well. My only gripe is that with the type of wheel rim that I have here, which is the uh, universal Xbox wheel, rim that also has like the Forza Motorsport rim on it um, does not have any shall we call it secondary joystick so they've got like the one that acts like the d-pad which is fine but they do not have the one that you're able to look back with so I'll either have to go back and do some key bindings to actually see what's behind me or just race without knowing what's behind me. And that's fine too, because who cares what's behind you if you're winning, right? So that being said, you know, I'm quite surprised that it's all working as well as it is, but I am going to go here. That's not what I wanted. Still getting used to the rim. So I'm going to take this moment to go to our handling tuning menu. So the other issue that I'm having is that we have, as you can tell, the drift entry is the brake tap, which in all honesty, I would like to keep it that way, but like the drifting doesn't work all that well with the wheelbase or like the pedals. So I'm just gonna throw it on drift to see if we can do it any better. So I've actually got my foot cam on for a reason so you can see exactly what's going on. So you kind of do that and like, I guess it works, but for when I was trying out earlier, um, I don't know if it's because I've got such a grippy build or if it's just, you know, not well optimized. But drifting is, it can also just be that we've discussed before that the drifting mechanic in this game isn't that great. Like it, it's, the handling itself has been overhauled, which is great, but what they did with drifting is just unsatisfying and clunky. And even when I've had like a quote unquote drift build car, it just would always oversteer and the, Drifting was really hard to keep, like, the inertia going. So, 
That being said, for those who actually have like a manual shifter, which, oh my God, that would be so good to do in this game. Having like that manual shifter with the clutch going on like a Miata. Oh man, I might actually have to buy that now. But then having like the actual handbrake pulley, um, I, I think that's the way to do it. I honestly do think that's the way to do it. <laughs> and yes, having a wheel does not mean that you're any good at actually driving. But as you can tell here too, the other weird thing is like how you're trying to boost and then shift up. Like the rim is a little bit wide for doing that unless you put your hand through the spokes of the rim. It's kind of odd. Huh, somehow I think we got that. Cool. Boost. Kind of stretch around the rim for the shifter. There we are. Kind of drift a little bit. There we go. I think we just really need to twist the wheel all the way around to get that to work. And finally, even though that we can't change the mapping controls of... Oh, come on. Even though we can't change the button mapping, um, I am very happy that we are able to finally have a decent shifting method. So this game might actually be worthwhile for trying to shift uh, because, oh man, doing like using your gas and then your brake and then trying to like shift that way. No, that's uh, shift with the bumpers. No, that's, that's not the way to do it. But I think part of the other issue too with Need for Speed games like, you know, Heat and Unbound is that with the drifting mechanic the way that it is, I've just found it very difficult to focus on shifting while trying to do the drifting. Uh, it could just be that I'm not as at it, but it's just... Also with the NOS and that kind of stuff, it's just there's too much to think about. And then again, that drifting mechanic there is just kind of odd and it just is a very clunky experience. I mean, for those who are actually good at drifting, please roast me in the comments. Fine. For those who are really good at, you know, using manual transmission in the later Need for Speed games, roast me in the comments. That's fine. But in the early Need for Speed games, i.e. Hot Pursuit 2 and Underground and the rest of that, actually Carbon as well, um, when I've recently played them to kind of get a feel of their shifting mechanisms it it works it's i think it's maybe because they're a little bit more grip builds or they don't have that much of a drifting mechanic i don't know it's just an interesting observation that i've had is, is i've preferred the shifting of, of those earlier games because I think it's easier to focus on because you're trying to like race a race car I guess I don't know I'm just kind of rambling at this point and you guys are just watching for the wheel gameplay which is not ideal at the moment so sorry I'm in 6th place because of it <laughs> not a good driver with this right now but we might be able to make up some place nope <laughs> Uh, nope. Nope, and nope, and nope. Oh well. All right, so we're going to do something controversial. See a wheel, wheel rim. Don't mind the Roman Grosjean jersey behind me. So we're going to do the Fanatec um, GTDD Pro wheel rim which is a lot smaller, has less satisfying, you know, clicking shifters. But I think that having the distance going, wrapping around for the shifter and then clicking the X button should be all right. Assuming that this game supports this. So let's find out. So it does. Nice. So immediately, There is a lot of garbage on the road. <laughs> oh, that's so much better. So I feel the weight of the wheel a little bit better. I mean, the the Fanatec wheel rim that I had the, before, the Universal Hub, is a very heavy wheel rim. I think shaping off what 
Fanatec did to create the um, GT DD Pro wheel rim. Because, yeah, I can actually hit, like, the handbrake button a lot easier. So this is probably, ironically, the PlayStation wheel is probably the way to go. Because, yeah, this is... <sighs> I mean, that's that part's not great, but now I can actually feasibly, like, hold the boost button there. And if I need to do a handbrake turn... <laughs> what was that? Oh. Hmm. I'm just... I'm really surprised the difference between the Universal Hub for Xbox and then this here. So I imagine if you had a smaller rim for the Universal Hub and you're able to put, like, the adjustable buttons you know a little bit further out close like to the edge of the rim probably a little bit of a better experience but yeah this this is a lot better in my mind yeah i think this would be a really good game with that shifter and car like this the the flappy paddle gearbox just it doesn't it doesn't feel like it should having like an actual miata with like you know, the clutch and the shifter would be fantastic. The thing that I have noticed, though, is as far as, like, the force feedback goes, I'm actually at about 75% here because, you know, at 100%, as you can tell, like, the rattling of the, um, of the quick release system is, is quite bad. So what I've actually done is booted it down to, like, like I said, 75%, and it seems a little bit better. Oh god, help. Yeah, I figured that was gonna happen. But as far as force feedback goes, I had found out that going over that, I barely felt that curb, but there's a couple of curbs earlier that I couldn't feel at all. So yeah, I was only getting just a tiny bit of that. And that was understeering so bad, and then as soon as I went up on the wall, it was like entirely all force feedback. So you don't I didn't feel that car scrape at all. So, force feedback is pretty hit or miss. Like, big crashes, you're going to feel them. Uh, that drift there kind of felt, yeah, I'm feeling just a tiny bit. But at like 75%, you should be feeling what should be like 6 Newton meters worth of torque. Or just anything. And not much. Really not much. So, I mean, it, it works. And it's definitely a very different experience than what you would normally expect with, like, your controller. But I think all in all, these games are meant to be played on controller. I think you're going to have a lot more fun doing it. But if you want to be different or you want to try out this game on wheel, please do. Uh, if your wheel is supported, um, go for it. If your wheel technically isn't supported... Try it out anyway. This wheel didn't seem like it was supported, and it works. It's not the most optimized you know, wheel rim for this. So one of the other things that I kind of have a tendency to do for many racing games in general is, even if it is like a set of courts and whatnot, uh, I actually limit the wheel rotation a little bit. Like if it's F1, I'm doing like the formula style rims. I have a tendency to normally limit the rotation down to like just 180 degrees because I don't actually maybe even a little bit less because I don't want to rip my arms off trying to do eh, it might actually be 360 I don't know I don't want to rip my wrists off by turning the rim so in this situation I'd recommend doing so as well just from the standpoint that since you've got the boost normally like in the middle of the rim somewhere you want to be able to have somewhat decent access to that there. And what I am noticing is even though this is a smaller rim, I am have a tendency to kind of fat finger some of the other um, buttons on here as well, like the handbrake button, i.e. being square. Yeah, I'm, I'm hitting that more times than I'd like to admit. So final thoughts on using a rim or a wheelbase with Need for Speed Unbound. Uh, answer is, it's doable. 
it's a very odd experience though like i said it, it does kind of feel clunky at times you don't get a whole lot of response or consistent response should we call it uh force feedback wise so if you really just want to play around with this and try it out like please go for it it is definitely a different experience i think i kind of would prefer to stick with controller though because if you're gonna if you have a whole wheelbase setup you're probably doing eye racing or you're probably doing like um gran turismo or forza motorsport and but yes i guess there's crossover with need for speed but at the same time too like it's it's just a different type of game it, it really is so please try it out i think you know for those who do have supported wheelbases you guys are going to enjoy it but maybe not for me it's it's a lot of work to get this all set up and get it all working for something that's not an ideal experience when i could probably have the ideal experience with the controller so uh you know thanks again for all watching if you enjoy this content make sure to like comment and subscribe i guess we're just going to be doing need for speed unbound for the next foreseeable future forever i guess so stay tuned next week where we probably do more need for speed unbound woohoo <laughs> so again thanks so much for watching i hope you guys have a great day today take care bye